Hey guys, Zalonius here. Welcome to another video on the channel. This is a really important one. In this video, we are looking at the most OP broken things in the game right now. This is an updated one. The meta has completely shifted in this new patch. Pace and explosive control players are way more viable again. So watch this video. I'm going to show you guys all the most OP ways of scoring and attacking on FIFA 23. If you're struggling to score goals, struggling to break your opponents down, if you use a few of the things I talk about in this video, it will transform your attack. Lots, There's probably like six or seven things in this video, so it's going to help you guys a lot. I appreciate you guys liking the video. helps the videos do better. And if you're new around here, you want to improve, get better at FIFA, this is the channel for you every day I'm posting content tactics gameplay tips looking at the best players in the game subscribe get involved enjoy the channel appreciate you guys now the first thing we're talking about here is going to be the first time chip through ball this is one of the most broken stupid things i have ever seen on a fifa i'm going to play the clip just let you guys watch it look at that these are crazy now, if you don't know how to do it, I'm going to explain it. So, I'm building up here in the midfield. You can see here, when the ball is passed there to, I think it's Pele. So, I've got the 95 Pele there. I've passed it into him. And this is one of the reasons two striker formations or the 4-3-2-1 are so good. Because when you've got these two strikers who are set up top together, you can trigger the run with one of them. And then with the other guy, do a first time chip through ball. So, Pele here. You can see, when I've passed it there, I've moved the left stick up and pressed L1, which tells Ribery to go on a run that way. If you press L1, it will trigger a run in behind. So as the ball's coming to Pele, Ribery's running in behind. He's not controlled that centre-back, because why would he? He's going to control the man who's next to the ball. I can see Ribery's on the shoulder of the defender running in behind. His defender's running there. You do have to time it right. And the, the reason these are so OP is because they're first time and they're so hard to defend. Gets them in on goal. And from there, one touch bang. They're way better now on this patch as well because they improved through balls. I don't know why, but EA and all their wisdom thought they'd improve through balls. And now that explosive and controlled players are a lot faster, you can do these through balls and get in way easier. So the way to do it is you trigger a run with L1 pass it to the other striker and then do l1 r1 and triangle you can do an l1 triangle through ball but the l1 r1 triangle through balls are better they're just a little bit lower trajectory which means they come down quicker so your attacker gets in quicker the timing of them does take a bit of getting used to and they won't always work but you can see if your opponent isn't ready for it and you time it well it's an easy one-on-one -on -one. and i score so many goals using these and i don't even think i'm that good at them there's people in the elite division who all they do spam these. It's horrible to defend. The only real way you can defend these is as soon as you see a chance for your opponent to do it, you switch D centre back and cover it. And even then, these are sometimes just impossible to defend. Probably the most OP thing we'll show in this video, but there's lots more to come. Let's look at the next thing. Are you looking to improve at FIFA? Then Underdog Gaming is the place to be. Underdog Gaming is run by me, Zelonius, and Jambu another FIFA pro who have been full-time content creators and pro players for the last six years, hitting elite division and top 100 with ease every single year. We've got lots of different tiers catered to what you want from all the way from entry level access to a big community discord full of people all looking to improve and get better at the game, weekly articles and videos with exclusive tips and guides and tutorials, follow backs on Twitter where you can DM us uh, and get full access to us coaching sessions gameplay analysis we'll be doing a spreadsheet which will be updated throughout the year with all the op meta players if you want to improve at fifa and you're serious about taking your game to the next level underdog gaming is the place to be you can find the patreon by going to patreon.com slash underdog gaming or check the link that's in the description of this video i look forward to seeing you guys there the second thing we are going to talk about on this video that is op is player locks player locks are so good i'm getting better at them i'm trying to practice them a lot but i'm going to show you an example of a goal i scored where without the player lock i just don't think this is happening so you watch it here 
Nice little uh, burst of pace there, Rubri. You can see there I've pressed the player lock. To do a player lock, you press the two sticks in. So L3 and R3, the two sticks, click them in. And then you have to quickly move the right stick to basically aim at the player that you want to lock to. So I click the sticks and then I move it there. Here now, the reason this is really good is because if I don't do this, there's a good chance here that he just runs there and makes a bad run. On cutbacks, if you don't play a lock, you are very much just hoping your AI makes a good run, which isn't consistent. A lot of the time on cutbacks, if I get there, the AI just makes a run there and I pass across and it's great. I don't always use player locks, but player locks, one of the things that's so OP about them is the pass is nearly always perfect. If you don't play a lock and make a pass that's not on a strong foot, facing the right direction perfectly, quite often the just pass won't work and it won't lock on. Whereas with player lock, for some reason, even if the player you're using to pass isn't that good at passing, quite often, whether it's a chip through ball, a cross, a ground pass through ball, they just seem to be perfect, the pass. So here, a player lock, I move, when you have the player lock on Yaya Tora here, I can move the left stick to make him drift slightly. I can see that defender's there, so I want Yaya Tora to just get a bit of space there. I pass to him now, and there I score. If I don't use the player lock, there's honestly a good chance that here he just goes there or he just makes a run that doesn't suit me. The player lock gives me more control, gives me that little bit of space and I score. It's really good for playing through balls. It's really good for playing players down the line, for cutbacks. You kind of learn when and when you can't use these. If someone's really tight to you, don't use them because they just tackle you. You can use them in two-on-one situations to kind of bait people out. But player locks, if you can add them to your game, are very hard for people to defend. And it forces them to either press you or mark the man. And then you have an advantage from that. Add player locks to your game. It will really start to confuse your opponent and give you new ways of scoring. The third most OP thing we're talking about now on FIFA 23 is the extra pass. When I say third most, I'm, th these aren't in any particular order. Just all these things are really OP. But playing the extra pass, guaranteeing you a goal is so important. This is something that really will take you to another level on every FIFA. When I coach people, I find so often one of the common mistakes that people make is they miss the opportunity for a guaranteed goal. They hit a shot that normally should be a goal, but it ends up missing, whereas they could have just done the extra pass to guarantee the goal. If you're interested in coaching, by the way, I've worked with over 600 people over the last five FIFAs. Contact me on Twitter or Instagram for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Now let's watch this clip. I do think I may be overdo this a little bit, but I think it was quite a nice goal in the end. Ball roll scoop, nice trick there. See there, play it there, and that is a guaranteed goal at that point. Watch this back. Here, he doesn't know if I'm going to cut back or not. There, if I try to turn and get a shot off, there is a very good chance that Virgil comes across. But here, I spot there. He's onside because of that. And here... With the movement he's made, that is an easy tap-in for me. There is nothing the keeper can do here. Like I can't physically miss that. There's just no world in which that misses that. That extra pass effectively there has gone from what's maybe a 50-60% chance with Dembele to a 99.9% .9 chance. I can't miss. This is very common. Let's say if I got one-on-one -on -one and I've got a player there to shoot across goal, but I've got another player here I could cut back to. Lots of people still shoot. And it goes in most of the time, but sometimes misses, where if they made the extra pass, they score. Playing the extra pass just increases the odds. FIFA's a weird game. It's one of these games where you can do the right thing and be punished. You can do the wrong thing and get rewarded. You can red time a shot and it goes in. You can green time a shot and it goes wide. But what you are doing is you are trying to put things in your put the odds in your favour, basically. And if you can do things that make you more consistent as a player, you will get more consistent results. Consistency, using the right meta things, will take your game to another level. The extra pass is a huge part of that. It's OP because it just guarantees you goals that you might not otherwise get. Add the extra pass to your game and I promise you will score a lot more goals and be a lot more consistent. Before this patch, the only players who ever seemed to have much pace who could ever get in behind with any form of consistency and really you could play crazy through balls to seem to be lengthy players. Haaland, Sorloff, even like Darwin Nunes, Cristiano Ronaldo, Lewandowski, Benzema. 
they seemed quicker at getting in behind than players like Mbappe. Neymar, players like that. On this patch, everything's changed with that. Look at this through ball here. So here you can see El Awire and the Saudi King is on a run. When players put their arm out like that, it's because they've made a run. If you are defending, especially on this patch, you need to mark runs in behind. You have to play more passive in terms of you can't apply as much pressure to the ball. Your manual defending has to be really focused on right stick switch and, and covering that running behind. If you don't, you'll concede goals like this. Look at this, man. That pace is outrageous. I don't really know how that's defendable other than very quickly switching. This is a crazy pass from Frankie de Jong. But most people at this point in the game have midfielders with 90 passing or so. 90 vision, long pass, short pass. That can play these type of passes now. It's an L1-R1 chip through ball. L1 chip through ball still have the uses. But if you have the space to do an L1-R1 through ball, it's a chip, but the trajectory is lower. So it makes it easier for the striker to bring it down. And then there, this guy's up there for the best player in the game right now because he's just that fast. And he gets crazy technical stats because he doesn't even need to put a chem style into pace. There, I think that's Kyle Walker on him. Like, he's been absolute destroyed. Before the patch, this just wasn't happening. But these are crazy. Look for players with pace who you can get in behind. Use L1 to trigger a run. And then pace is king. Pace is OP on this game. That's just such a free, easy goal out of nowhere. You need to be taking advantage of that. On this game right now, pace is one of the most OP things. That is a borderline broken. One of the most OP things on FIFA that amazes me that a lot of the community still don't even know about is kickoff. Kickoff, 45th, 90th. Basically, if you've never heard of this before, you're living under a rock, if you never even noticed it in game, on FIFA, when someone gets a kickoff or has the last attack of a half, so like the 45th minute, 90th minute, the odds of scoring drastically increase. Basically, it's a lot harder for the defenders to do anything. Players in, on the ball in attack seem just more glitchy. The shots seem better. Keepers seem worse. Basically, just it seems like the sliders and odds of scoring drastically increase. Look at this goal I can see here. You can see that it's kickoff. I've just scored a Pele. He just burst past me there and then hits. You can see there a yellow time finish. That goes right my keeper and my keeper lets it in. Don't get me wrong. This wasn't the best defending by me. I'm not going to sit here and say it was good defending. It wasn't and I definitely could have done better. But some of the things that happen here. If we watch. You can see here this midfield I've just not tracked whatsoever. My defender here. Normally, there, would just get the ball. You just run into him and get the ball. I was trying to be more aggressive. Probably from kickoff, I shouldn't have been that aggressive, though. Because he just burst past me. The step over is giving me even bigger boost. And Cordoba, who's normally really quick, can't even get near him. And then a yellow tied finish just flies past the keeper. This probably doesn't happen outside of kickoff. Kickoff isn't always consistent. It doesn't always seem to be absolutely crazy. But it's worth know, um, knowing about it. A lot of people waste their own kickoffs by just running forwards and giving the balls away straight away. Let the kickoff build up a bit. Let it juice up. Take advantage of it. This is a good opportunity and chance to get back into the game. And the other thing is make sure you have the last attack of a half to try and give yourself that extra advantage. So many times I see goals go in at the end of a half and I'm just sat there about to moan and be like, how on earth has that happened? And then I look at the time, I'm like, oh, it was 45th minute. Oh, it was 90th minute. It's crazy. Watch out for it. Use the knowledge of it to your advantage. It will definitely help. To finish off the video, we are talking about a thing that's been nerfed, but is still OP in my opinion, and still a classic FIFA 23 thing that I've never really seen before. It is the Traveller, the outside of the foot shot. To do it, you just press L2. Look at this one I conceded here. And we're talking about the 90th minute here as well. Look at, you can see the time at the top left over there. Look at the space. Yaya Torre gets all my midfield there. Just don't really do anything. He gets all that space. And look at that. That is the classic Traveller position outside the foot to the, into the top corner. And it flies in. 
watch that back without the software going weird. You can see there he does green it. And it goes in the top corner. Look at watch my keeper here, by the way. This is what I'm talking about from the last OP thing about like kickoffs 90th minutes. What is my keeper doing? It looks like he's seen a ghost or something. But what I'm saying is with these Travellers, they are still good. They are good enough that if you get put in the perfect position, I think now you can't just shoot them with like Van Dyke or Koulibaly. But if you get in the perfect position with a good attacker and you're confident you can green them, they are still fairly consistent. They're not as dominant as before. They're not as guaranteed. But on a game where it's not always easy to break down your opponent if they're sat deep, I would be going for these still in the right position. If you have players with the outside the foot shot trait, it's a lot better than um, not having it now. Before, it didn't really matter too much. Whereas now, it's a 10% nerf if you have the trait, 30% if you don't. If you have really high shooting, it's still going to go in a fair bit. I've still scored quite a few since the patch with players who don't have the trait, like Alawiron, but have good enough shooting stats anyway. Yaya Torre doesn't. But one of the keys now is you do have to green them a lot more, I would say. If you don't green them, the odds of scoring them is quite a bit lower. Got another one that I scored here, I'll show you. So we've got another one that we scored here with Ribery. I didn't even time this one. Ribery does have the trait, so it's only a 10% nerf to him. So it's nearly as good as it was before the patch anyway. But look at this one there. About 28, 30 yards nearly. Just flies in the perfect animation over the keeper. These are still really hard to defend. But now, after the patch, people don't press you as hard. They give you the long shot more. A lot less people are moving the keeper. So, whilst they're harder to score in terms of they're not as consistent, you almost get more space to set them up perfectly. And it makes it a bit easier to green them as well. So, Travellers are definitely still worth doing. Are they as dominant as before? No. Are they still OP? In my opinion, yes. So in this video, we've looked at lots of things. We've looked at the first time through balls. We've looked at player locks, cutbacks, playing the extra pass, Travellers, how OP paces. There are lots of different things on this game that if you can learn about them, knowledge is the first step, and then start adding them to your game, it will drastically change you as a player. And the other thing is, it's not just about scoring goals and attacking with them. If you don't know about these things, how are you ever going to defend it? If you don't know that the last attack of a half is more dominant, how are you going to know you should be keeping the ball and making sure you get it? I would rather keep the ball and pass it around my back than risk giving it my opponent for an easy goal. Having knowledge of these things will allow you to score more goals, become more dominant. Being consistent is key on FIFA, and having consistent OP ways of scoring will massively help with that. And then knowing how to defend these, even though sometimes some of these are really hard to defend, at least knowing and giving yourself a chance is the best thing you can do sometimes. There's plenty more we could have talked about, honestly. Those corners are still really dominant. There's a few free kick techniques that are crazy. Certain types of shots in the box, certain skills. There's lots, but we'd end up doing an hour video on the things that are OP. Hopefully this video has helped you guys. I appreciate your support a lot. Make sure you smash that like and subscribe button. Appreciate you guys. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.